This is Pete Moore on Halo Talks NYC. I have the pleasure of having a friend of mine for many, many, many years, maybe a couple decades ago, Phyllis Lake, E. Lakos, head of sales in the U.S. market. We are going to talk about weight plates. We're going to talk about squatting. We're going to talk about a couple funny stories and uh, we're going to get people excited about going back into the gym. So, Hill, it's good to see you, man, and welcome to Halo Talks. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Awesome. So, you want to just give a little bit of your personal background uh, for our audience and then we can uh, connect the dots to where we are today. Yeah, real quick. You're probably looking at the luckiest individual in the fitness industry. Um, fitness was a passion of mine when I was in high school. I had the good fortune of going to work for Joe Cerulli, and I believe it was 1979, two weeks after he received the first seven pieces of Nautilus equipment. So I spent the decade of the 80s with Nautilus, then I moved into Cybex. A good friend of mine and I, we started a company called Ground Zero, then it became Free Motion Fitness, yeah. and here I am at my fourth rodeo, Eleco. And um, I'm just in the right place at the right time in this lifetime, it seems. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, we, we had Joe Cerulli on uh, about yeah. a couple of years ago when we were in person, back when they used to have trade shows in person. Those were fun times. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we get back to some of those. I'm sick of my Zooming networking activities. Um, maybe talk a little bit about, you know, strength training in general, you know, has always been, you know, something that everyone says, oh, you need to do to lose weight, but now it's actually proven. I don't think there's any question about it, uh, as well as, you know, some of these boutiques that are on the, the functional training side and, and your thoughts on that coming back. Well, it's interesting, you know, in the 90s or back in the 80s, we sold equipment. The last thing on the buyer's mind or even the user's mind was free weights. It has come full circle. We're back to the 70s now. First question people ask me as a sales rep is bars and plates, platforms, racks, dumbbells. That is a new order of the day. They start there and they work backwards. Where it used to be how many pieces of cardio can we get into a facility? Now the question is, is how many benches and racks and platforms can we get into this facility and what's going to be my th my throughput my ROI and so it's completely changed as it over the last few years the evidence you know take the Paul Juris science out of it but the evidence is is plain and clear to everyone there's a few exercises done in a squat rack that you just cannot duplicate the results from so there's been a huge uptick particularly in the last 6 years that I've been in Laco between Instagram um, Google, you know, I've got friends on the education side that will tell you that two of the most Googled exercises right now on the internet are squatting and deadlifting. So do you think that, um, you know, somebody told me the other day, not you, but there was a stat that Olympic squat platforms is like the go-to new, uh, piece of equipment that health clubs want to have and that there's, you know, demand for the ability to Instagram my squat seems to be yep. like a, a growing trend here. It's so true. I mean, Pete, honestly, when we used to lay out clubs, we put the squat racks as far away from the front door as possible. That's what all the consultants told us to do when we were designing and laying out clubs. Today, we're putting all that almost next to the front door. People are proud of how many platforms, racks, and bars they can give their members accessibility to and still maintain the safety from you know, moving objects. So, so when you take a look at all the digital technology that's coming out there and we have calls with groups you know, who are trying to track your reps based on you know, sensors and there's probably a place for that. You know, at the end of the day, if you do 10 squats properly, you know, you're gonna get the results. There's really not much else to like track or talk about. You know, when you see this wave or when you've kind of been fighting this wave of you know, the technology versus, hey, look, we make weight plates. And if you do the exercises correctly, like you're going to get maybe even better results than checking your phone all the time. It's, well, here's what's interesting is in spite of all the new technology, new technology that is as recent as the Apple, nothing will ever replace the bar going up and down. Nothing will ever replace the user being under the effects of gravity. So as connected as we get through watches and other devices and data, 
Um, it's still never going to replace the actual exercise. It'll help us get better at them. It may coach us to do them. It may help us to understand a concept that was never really discussed called periodization. You can't be Superman every day. So you have to understand mm -hmm. how do you periodize your workouts? And so that connectivity is going to give us a lot of training edges and advantages that we didn't have even say five years ago. But still, at the end of the day, you got to lift the weight. Mm -hmm. So you're not in the R&D department at Aleco, but, you know, what, what do you think goes on there from a standpoint of, you know, I see the back of your screen here, which is a beautifully, you know, uh, curated, uh, you know, Olympic squat machines with different colors. Do you, you know, kind of say, okay, we're, we're basically focused on, on the functionality and maybe the aesthetics, but at the end of the day, like we're not, we want to stick to our empirical formula and that's basically what you just talked about. So like, how does the, how does the R and D or technology brain of a company that is kind of since 1957 kind of stay in the course providing results like the Olympics are not, you know, E games, right? So uh, how, do, how do they think about that over there? Or if you're in the room. Pete, it's, there's still a lot of room for improvement on everything you see behind me. It's just, there's still always room. And that's what they're focusing on. Um, you know, the technology and how we made up to some new device such as Perch or other devices, you know, that still remains to be seen. But believe it or not, there's a lot of new technology we can bring into what you see behind me. So when you take a look at, you know, what's going to happen post COVID, you know, we're obviously going to see a fair amount of boutiques that are never going to reopen. We've got several health club chains going, you know, in and out of bankruptcy. And it's probably gonna be a lot of vacant locations. Do you think maybe kind of even going back to the core and maybe having more strength equipment is going to be kind of a delineation between, yeah, you go at home and, and go on your connected bike, but like, this is like a group of, of people and we're, a community or a tribe and we're going to use, you know, this is like old school, get in shape, you know, take your COVID 19 pounds and we're actually going to get them off as a group. You know, do you view that as maybe like a trend in the other, maybe in, a, in a, the opposite direction, but maybe at the same speed? Absolutely. And if I get off on too long of a tangent here, just reel me in. As a result of COVID, the industry will get better. As a result of COVID, we will erase the public perception of what the fitness industry is about. Whether we like it or not, we get enough feedback from the public that we are seen as a fit and sawdust type of environment, when in fact we're not, and we're gonna even get better at it as a result of COVID. The other thing about where Eleco fits into all of this is there is a, a need for personal human connection that will never go away, no matter how good our garage gyms get no matter how good the connectivity data, all these watches and things get, people still want to work out together. And if you've been in gyms as I have recently, the places are packed. We're back yeah. to 65% or better. Um, I believe that next year for all clubs that are still in business, I think they're gonna have an amazing year. Eleco, we're planning to have an amazing year. We just have to get through the rest of this year and settle on how do we you know, bring a united voice to the fitness industry where maybe we can, at the intersection of health and fitness, we can actually pull in physical therapy. We can actually pull in well-being. We can actually pull in all the other disciplines that have surrounded us for years. And we're going to all have a better place to go to that's going to be much healthier. You know, one of the criticisms we've had is that in the past, people just do too much. They'll go into the gym for the first time in months and they'll do 10 sets of 10 squats with a run minute rest period, or they'll do their EMONs or whatever, and they can't walk for three days. That's not necessarily the goal. The goal has shifted from being the biggest person in the gym with the biggest biceps to now the healthiest. People are looking for help and fitness now. I believe that the, the physique contest will probably never go away. But as the general public discovers that health and fitness is the conduit to better longevity, a higher immune system, then this is this is for all of us to help mold the shape of the future. Yeah, look, I, I think um, at least what people have learned is, you know, if you're healthy, 
this isn't going to take you down. I mean, you have to really have some kind of underlying condition, mm -hmm. um, whether that's genetic or whether it's self-induced, mostly self-induced. Right. Um, you know, 10-year-old kids don't get diabetes, you know, on their own, playing in their room. You know, somebody's feeding them something. Um, you know, when you take a look at the industry, you make a really good point. And that's something that Dave and I have been, been trying to figure out. And I listen to this podcast called Gangster Capitalism about the, the uh, National Rifle Association. And they had uh, political contributions last year of 9.5 million. And URSA, you know, our beloved industry association, it's not really their initiative, but, you know, $6,000 of, of political contributions is not going to get you in the room. You know, so we were been thinking about more broadly, you know, is there a way to set up a national fitness association? And it's the NFA. And we're basically going to go and we're going to pull in you know, not just large equipment companies and the health club chains, but the private equity firms that own them, the advocacy groups that, you know, are not comfortable with enough uh, bike lanes, you know, and like have like a list of 10 commandments that say, hey, look, you know, one, we don't cause COVID and we're taking all the precautionary measures. So there's no reason to treat us differently or even better than a bar or an establishment that sells alcohol, right? So that's one. Two is, you know, here's certain things that, you know, are going to be demands and, and start to run this like an association that has some political cloud instead of, you know, we're like the, you know, nice guys in the health club industry that are trying to get people results, you know, one location at a time. I feel like maybe this is a wake up call for the industry to think about like, hey, look, this is how things work. Like there are political action committees. We didn't make them happen, but that's where they are. And that's how it works. So what are your thoughts on that, you know, from the evolution of where we are? Maybe not only a wake-up call to the, to the clubs and the studios, but maybe like all of us need to think differently about how we get what we want. It, absolutely. You know, it is kind of staggering that people are more interested in funding gun associations and, and those type of lobbies than they are their own health and fitness and their own well-being. So I think the opportunity has never been better than it is right now for us to shape the industry as we want, make it available to everyone. You know, we start seeing more um, activity. Um, we have a great, one of our best customers, they're actually building communities around the fitness center. And that's all inclusive from Whole Foods to drugstores to um, townhomes. So it's gonna be an all inclusive future and in order for those sorts of communities to continue to grow, there is going to need, some, need to be some leadership and direction that takes everything that you and I are discussing today. Someone's got to be the spearhead of that or an organization is the spearhead of that. Yeah. So, you know, as you see, um, you know, getting calls from some of your clients or, you know, just getting your pulse on the industry, you know, you reference, we got to get through the end of the year. You know, do you have like in your mind, give an example, you know, back in, you know, April 1st, someone's like, okay, you know, what should I plan for to get to the other side? And I was always like the November one guy, you know, 2020. I feel like I'm playing this game of football and they keep pushing the goalpost back on me like every 10 yards, or we get like a 10, you know, we get a flag for like, you know, a 15 yard penalty, you know, for no reason. Like we're not telling you what happened. We're just going to push it back. So like, what's your, how are you as like an industry expert and kind of seeing where we're at and probably knowing a little bit more about the medical side, just because you're in the know, um, you know, what, what's the under over on 75% capacity or up higher? Just, you know, here's the thing, just watch the data that Blair McKinney is, is, is gathering every single day. And if you just chart that data and you watch what he's reporting, you can see the uptick. And you can also see that the uptick is just starting to get more and more momentum. I predict based on his, his numbers and the message that we send back out to the community that you don't catch COVID at a health and fitness facility, I think we're going to be back to normal before we know it. I, again, I think we're going to see this whole COVID thing as a silver lining that makes us all better. Yeah. So, you know, what else have you seen besides maybe a shift towards, you know, maybe old school, like training to get results and you don't have to plug in, you know, a hundred pieces of, you know, equipment from our standpoint, like I've seen contactless check-in, right. That should have been done 10 years ago, right? Like the day that the airline industry allowed you to use a mobile phone to get onto an airplane. Like, I can't believe like you haven't been able to do that in a health club where nobody touches things. 
So what, what do you think some of the benefits coming out of COVID that are maybe operational changes that should have been done a while ago, now are going to be done and it will proliferate? Pete, it's going to be the people. And if you go to certain health clubs in the country, and you know who they are, and you interact with their staff, it is a memorable experience. If you need help, it's there before you ask. When you go out of the facility, someone is checking with you to make sure you had a good experience. This has nothing to do with equipment. It has right. everything to do with the social experience, the customer service, and you know the people that we all read, like Danny Meyer. Those things is, is going to become is sort of the Bible to operate in the front desk. Yeah. And you know, I can tell you as a frequent flyer and traveler. You know, we have a tendency as human beings to always gravitate to what we're familiar with, or more importantly, to someone that we may know at that location. People do not join health and fitness facilities because of the equipment. They join because of the staff. Right. And those experiences are with people. You know, the equipment, if you really want to be honest, it's kind of an incidental thing. Yes, you'll have certain people come to the front desk and they will ask, you know, for Eleko. They do. Mm -hmm. But the biggest conduit between the rest of the population that's growing and becoming more aware of how health and fitness can preserve our immune systems and improve the quality of our life, it's all coming back to someone's going to have to shake hands with you, someone's going to have to look in the eye, someone's going to have to really take an interest in you and what you're doing and why are you there. Yeah. I mean, I, I read these uh, Planet Fitness research reports and, you know, good for them. And they've definitely gotten 15 million people off the couch, which is awesome. Um, but you don't read anywhere where they're trying to help people get results or change their life. They're basically giving you access, just, you know, do yeah. it, do it, do it yourself. And, and there's a place for that. And I appreciate what they've done um, because it's definitely going to turn into a feeder that people say, okay, I'm, I'm not intimidated by coming into yeah. the boutique studio with the, you know, with the Alecos because I've seen somebody do that or I know what it is and it doesn't intimidate me. I think one of the issues that, we need to be cognizant of as an industry is, you know, people are still selling price even during COVID. And I think price is probably the least of people's concerns right now, like zero down. Like how about like, help me get results. It's fun by the way, which people seem to forget that, you know, we're trying to create a fun experience. And the fact that, you know, we, you, you can get to where you, you want to be and it's not as much of a time commitment as you would think. So you know, do, do you feel like from a marketing standpoint, maybe we need to remind people that like, don't get, don't sell me all, don't tell me about all your amenities. Like what people want to hear right now is like, it's a safe place to work out. It's a reasonable price and I'll get your results. Like to me, I don't, any other marketing message is like, you, you're losing somebody. What, what's your take on like industry pricing and like marketing to, to those groups? So you're spot on, you know, and again, I'm in and out of clubs, you know, four or five times a day, seven days a week. The number one thing that people are asking for when they come through the turnstile is safety. I do believe, and I've had a lot of our, our key customers, there are people out there right now about raising their membership rates and improving the quality of service, improving the quality of the facility, and not being shy about asking for a little bit more money to bring a new standard to what already is a great club. Oh, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see how do they, how well do they survive? Is that going to be the gateway to health and fitness? Is it going to continue to, to serve the rest of the industry as a feeder? I'm not sure. We'll have to see. But I do know that there's a lot of the, the club owners at a very high level that are actually thinking about how do they charge more? So again, a lot of challenges, but there's opportunity with it. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you, you make a great point about, about the staff. And I feel like a lot of retailers, like if you go into an Apple store, um, you don't have a bad personal interaction. I mean, I can't remember the one time I've ever had a bad personal interaction. Part of, part of that's probably hiring a certain type of person. Yep. But part of it's also probably role playing and, you know, giving them the, you know, the, the the words or the sentences or responses that are, that are appropriate. And I feel like, you know, we have not as an industry invested in, you know, those, those role playing and like, here's what you need to onboard. You know, I think it gets into somebody's doing like a sales job or like, here's like a functional part. There, there's one guy 
in, in Kansas, they always says like, um, you know, uh, the goal of the, the front desk worker is has one job and it's to make me feel important when I walk in. And that's basically all you need to do, right? And that's like their, their job function. Um, so hopefully there's, there's some more staffing that, uh, and training that comes on board because I don't think it's that hard to do, but I agree with you that experience is. I think there, there is a, there. and um, Adrian from Gates of Fitness that are shared this with me, it's called Pouring Happiness. And I'd highly recommend everybody just watching this five minute video because the next video you're gonna to wanna to pull up is something like with Danny Myers and Hospitality Suites, et cetera. Because it's all coming down to one thing. How can you pour a thousand cups of coffee and still have a smile on your face and be truly concerned about the person, the patron, who's going to drink that cup of coffee? Yeah. Great. So, you, so you're from the, uh, the Joe Cerulli uh, diaspora of, uh, of top executives around the industry. So were you, uh, were you back in the day wearing a suit and tie and doing personal training? Or uh, when did you get on that train? Hey, I I got on that chain when he first opened. You got to remember, I was there two weeks before he had his first line of Nautilus. And um, we all wear suits and ties. Um, I still wear a suit and tie when I go there to work out. <laughs> it's just part of the requirement, you know. But yeah, it was, it, it's still it's still there today. And then what's your, uh, Dave and uh, told me you guys had a, a chat on a hospital story that we got to get <laughs> taped on the Academy and the uh, Halo talk to you. So since, a, since a, an accident happened to me, I've been asked to speak on a number of occasions about the whole topic. Specific to do what we're doing here today is I'll, I'll twist it to health and fitness. And what people who are in the health and fitness industry don't realize is what a huge advantage we have, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. There is a certain element that we obtain as a result of a disciplined life of disciplined training and hard training. And it carries over to everything. So what happened a few years ago, I was in a car accident, I broke my back in five places, I was told I'd never walk again. So in two years, after a tremendous amount of help from Joe's staff at Request Physical Therapy, I'm obviously, I'm walking again. And every time I went to the physical therapy, I always reflected back on an experience that I had on too many occasions and that was Joe Cerulli training me on the old Nautilus compound leg. And for those of you out there that don't know what the Nautilus compound leg is, it's a leg extension. And Joe and Jim Flanagan, whoever it was there, they would literally take your legs from the leg extension, put them up on the leg press, and you were doing leg presses before you could take a breath. As soon as you hit failure, and I do mean failure, where you just were quivering and you felt like you're going to throw up, and even the, the feeling of throwing up kind of went away, you just got into this, this mindset of, come on, I got one more. You know, if, if they just started beating on me, it just fired you up. And get more about completing the set and then beating, you know, Joe's words because you couldn't even stand up. And he would always take you off the leg press. You'd hold your hands, your feet would hit the floor. And the first objective that took about a month to overcome was, how do you get off of that Nautilus compound leg and not hit the deck? The goal at first was just how can I get off of this and stand? And through that high intensity level of training came this, this ability to overcome anything. Whether it was the doctors telling me I never work again, the pain and discomfort of going through physical therapy and, and having you know Gareth bend me in positions I never knew I could bend in. And it carries over into every aspect of your life, whether, whether you're climbing the incline in Colorado Springs or whether you're going downhill on your bike as long as you can go, you know, from Mount Haleakala in Hawaii. There's always this element of you got to test yourself. You got to get better. You got to get better. So that's a brief version. Awesome. So, um, yeah, th th that's a great story. And I, 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 I keep harkening back to, you know, my, uh, basketball coach in ninth grade, you know, who just kept saying, you know, you got to go through the process. And once you get to the other side, you're going to like what you see, but you got to trust the process. Yeah. Um, so what other uh, final words of wisdom here do you want to embark on our, uh, on our year ending uh, podcast? Hey, I just, you know, if there's anyone out there that's listened to this and anything resonates, I'm, I'm available. 
you know, this industry has been so good to me. I will do anything to give back. I think one of the magic that pills about Joe Cerulli is in spite of what he's done and has done for the industry, you can still share a meal and just pick his brain. And I just offer the same thing. Obviously, I don't have the business background that Joe does, but life experience in this industry has been so good to me. Yeah, well, they say that, uh, you know, every every industry is built off the shoulders of somebody before them. Um, so I feel like now you've, uh, you've given me some additional inspiration. These are not easy days to psychologically get through. So hopefully everyone on the uh, uh, listening to the podcast here knows that, you know, we're on a roller coaster ride, but um, hopefully it's going to end and we can get off and we can get on an, an easier ride or a better one. Um, and uh, and we'll get there. So uh, great to see you. Great to hear from you. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the academy. And um, we will uh, we'll fire up 2021 in the, uh, in the right mindset and, uh, and get back to helping everybody we can again. Good to see you, man. All right, buddy. Thank you. Awesome, buddy. Later, man. Thank you. As we continue to build our Halo Talks email notification database, want to offer you a free $10 instant gift card from our friends at Promotion Vault. Also to show you how easy it is to offer your members and prospects and clients the ability to get desired actions out of them and reward them in real time, go to halotalks.com, put your email address into the pop-up box, see how it works, get a free $10 gift card from us. And uh, keep listening and making everybody great.